Welcome to the show. We've got a fun show today. We're kind of continuing with our October theme of just let's have fun and make some interesting stuff. Not necessarily the most practical, but still fun. So today we're going to be making what you might call a World War I style like trench raiding club. Uh, but you could also think of it as a zombie slayer. I don't know that it necessarily matters. Mostly it's just for fun. And in keeping with the October theme, there will be some pumpkin mayhem at the end. So definitely stay tuned for that. Uh, if you want to follow along and make this, all you're really going to need is some pretty simple power tools and access to a local hardware store. This build, I think, only cost me about $10 or $12. But I did start with an old softball bat. And if you'd prefer something like a hardwood dowel or an old handle from a shovel or whatever, that would be fine. Whatever you have available to you. I kind of like the bat anyway. It feels good in the hand. It's just, uh, it's way too unwieldy because, of course, it's a softball bat and it's hardwood. So I wanted to have a weapon at the end of this that was um, probably closer to a foot and a half to two feet and maybe two, two and a half pounds. Something I could use effectively with one hand. And if I did happen to be in a big sea of zombies and I had to keep fighting for a while, I wouldn't just get worn out after the first couple of swings. So with that in mind, I cut the bat down to about, I think, 21 or 22 inches. I did wind up later having to cut it down a little bit further to get everything to fit right. And honestly, I'm really glad I did. I would say plan to make this in about 18 inches, and it's going to feel very right in your hand. At least it feels good in my hand. For the head of the club, I went to the plumbing section at the hardware store, and I found a length of pipe that's, uh, I don't know, maybe four inches, four and a half inches long and has an interior diameter of just over an inch and a half. I think it was called one and a half, but it was a little bit larger than that, which was good because it meant that I didn't have to shave the bat down quite as far to make it fit properly. Now, one thing I've learned watching zombie shows is that when the outbreak first happens, you have a whole bunch of basically healthy human beings. Uh, of course, their brains have been taken over by a virus or whatever. But they're, generally speaking, their bodies are physically fit, they're strong, they're healthy, and they're moving pretty fast. So on day one or two or three of the outbreak, you definitely need a weapon that has some good weight to it and some penetrating power. And so for that reason, you're going to want some spikes on the end of your club. And they're going to have to be able to get pretty deep if you want to get to the central nervous system and do significant damage. But after a few weeks or months without fresh meat, their bodies really begin to deteriorate. They lose muscle mass, they lose bone density, their flesh becomes ragged, and they become much weaker and easier to defeat. So at that point, you really don't need like a strong, robust weapon that penetrate deeply. But it will still need to be hard enough to fracture the skull and lightweight enough that you can take multiple swings, especially if you wind up dealing with a small herd or something. So I guess that's how the idea occurred to me that it might be desirable to have interchangeability of your spikes or your studs on this club. That way you could adjust it to deal with the specific threat that you were facing. I tried to think of a way to do this without the welder because I realized that not everyone has access to a welder. But if you want to have interchangeability, which is what I was going for, you really are going to need something that you can screw in and screw out. And while I was thinking about that problem, I did come up with some other ideas. Having like a, a recessed nut where you might drill a hole in the bat and then take an epoxy and cement the nut in place. It may not be as strong as a weld, but it would be a way to do it if you don't have access to a welder. And realistically, after the apocalypse, you, uh, you may have access to a welder, but you're going to have a much harder time finding electricity. So there are other ways you could go about this. You can look through pictures of old World War I trench fighting weapons, and you'll see that there are many ways to go about solving these problems. But for me, the welder was the easiest way to get to what I wanted, which was to have that interchangeability of my fighting spikes. Now, some of you may have noticed that uh, some of the parts that I bought are galvanized. A thing you need to know is that if you're ever welding or applying real significant heat to anything that's galvanized, the zinc from the galvanization may actually start to give off poisonous fumes. And people have gotten very sick from that. And in some cases, very rare, in some cases people have even died. Unfortunately, it can be pretty hard to find some of these parts that have not been galvanized. 
So I have experimented with my own process for removing the zinc. There are a ton of forum discussions and different videos about it. I'm just not gonna go into that in this video, but for the sake of your own safety, you really don't wanna mess around with galvanized metal and a welder unless you know exactly what you're doing and you follow proper safety precautions. So there it is. I've got a lanyard through there. It seems like pretty much a must-have whether you're fighting in the trenches in World War I or, or going up against zombies. I'm using some hockey tape to wrap the grip and give a little bit better purchase on that handle. I find hockey tape convenient and effective and relatively durable, but of course there's other ways you could do it. But I had this tape on hand, so it seemed like the right thing for this project. And with that, it's time to see how this thing does against pumpkins. I'm going to start out with the longer spikes. Uh, just a note here, if you were in an actual like post-apocalypse survival type of situation, I might recommend cutting the ends off of these bolts and sharpening them so you'd have actual spikes, especially in those first few days after the outbreak, because you want to have as much penetrating power as possible. But I will leave that to the discretion of the user. I think this looks plenty menacing as it is, and I think it will be pretty effective against the pumpkins. One other thing I might mention here, if you decide to do a project like this yourself, uh, make sure to look into any local laws. I think for the most part, at least most of the areas that I am familiar with in the U.S., there's a pretty high tolerance for people just, you know, screwing around in their shop. But a lot of these kinds of projects, you know, this is definitely not something you want to be walking down the street with or, uh, you know, have in the back seat of your car when you get pulled over. So definitely look into the laws in your area, especially if you're ever planning to have something like this with you when you leave your shop, leave your property, uh, and go somewhere else. With that, let's smash some pumpkins. So yeah, definitely runes pumpkins pretty good. I think those longer bolts, with the, especially with the heads on them, are a little bit more likely to get snagged. So I'm going to try these shorter nuts on there too. Wow, that was remarkably effective. Uh, I guess I'll let you be the judge. Long spikes, short spikes, what do you like better? But that is the nice thing about this design is it's totally interchangeable. You could even go longer if you wanted to and you can sharpen up the ends or maybe even heat up these bolts and pound them out, sharpen them up and you'd even have some blades on there. It's kind of an interesting idea for another project. Anyway, that's about all I have time for today. I uh, really appreciate you joining me for this video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, I would love to have you, and I'd love to get your feedback. So if you have anything you wanted to mention, any questions or anything you wanted to say, absolutely leave a comment below. And maybe let me know what you think of these kinds of videos. Most of the work I've been doing so far has been oriented toward more of like traditional knife making and forging and things like that. Uh, but once in a while I'll do kind of a frivolous project 
and I really have a lot of fun with them. So if you want to see more like this, uh, let me know. Or if you'd rather see more of the hatchet making, knife making, forging type of stuff, uh, let me know that too. So thanks again. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next video.